Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about how to use the slope to graph lines and also slope intercept form. So I highly recommend actually, um, before I get into this, I guess the, the free guided notes for this one, I have like graph paper and stuff for you guys. So if you download the, the notes, you might find this video a little bit um, more, more interactive. Okay, so here's the thing that we're going to do. So I'm going to give you a point and a slope and just how can we make a line from this? So just to give you a little more context here, so normally like when we graph the line, like we have to have an equation, but if you know the slope and a point, you actually don't need an equation, believe it or not. So here's how we do this. We start by first plotting this point, so negative one, two. So I'm gonna come here at the origin, here's negative one, and I go up two, so negative one, two. Okay, so now from here, we wanna incorporate the slope. Now in this case, my slope is two, which is a whole number. So the thing to remember about slope is that slope is really rise over run. So if this is two, I really wanna think of this in the back of my mind as being two over one, which would mean that the, the rise is two and then the run is one. Okay, so the thing to remember about this, if it's positive, so let me maybe just note this. Positive means you go up and negative means you go down but you always turn right. So this is the way that you have to interpret a slope or is best to interpret a slope really, is to keep it very consistent in how you, how you think about this. Okay, so starting from this point, so what I wanna do is I wanna go up two because this is positive. So I go up one, two, and then I go to the right one. So let me mark that. And let me do that also just one more time. So I'm gonna go up one, two, and over one. So notice now how I have three points that I just counted out from the slope. And so then I can connect those three points. Let's pretend this is a straight line. Actually, that's a terrible line. Let's see if I can make a straighter line. Ah, slightly better. Okay, that, that's how we can make the line. Okay, so let's do, let's do another one together. Just make sure you've got it. So now I've got my slope is equal to negative one third and I'm starting at the point negative three, four. So once again, so we start at this point negative three, four. So I start here at the origin and I go to negative one, negative two, negative three, and then I go up to one, two, three, four. So there's my point. And from here, now I'm gonna count out the slope. Now, remember I said negative means down and this time I've got a, a fraction broken out. So this means I'm gonna go down one and then to the right three. So counting from here, I'm gonna go down one, down one, and then turn to the right, one, two, three. One more time, down one, and then to the right, one, two, three. So now I've got three points to make a nice straight line, and we're good to go. So that's kind of the idea behind this. So why don't you pause the video here? If you've got the guided notes, do the next two examples. Otherwise, pause here, give this a try, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for this one, so I'm gonna start by graphing out two negative one, so here's two negative one, and then I've got the slope one. So remember, you can think of this as really one over one, which means that I go up one and to the right one. So I go up one and to the right one, up one and to the right one, and connect those together like that. All right, so let's just do one more. Now I've got n equals two thirds, and I'm starting at the point zero negative three. So once again, if you wanna pause the video here to give this a try, you can hit play when you're ready. All right, so I'm starting here at zero three, or zero negative three, so I start at the origin and I go down one, two, three, so there's my first point. And now my slope is two, three, two, two over three. So I'm gonna go up one, two, and then over one, two, three, so there's my first point. I go up one, two, three, and, uh, yeah. I go up one, two, and then over one, two, three. You can tell I'm getting close to dinner time. My brain is going. Okay, so there we go. So I've got the three points connected. Okay, so now this actually leads me into another question. So what is slope intercept form? This is kind of related to what we're doing right now. So the slope intercept form of a line is this equation, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So remember, y-intercepts have this form where x is always zero, so we think of our y-intercepts as this zero come b coordinate, where b is some number. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna just get your brain used to picking out the slope and the y-intercept just by looking at the equation. So I've got a couple of examples here where this is what we're gonna do. So as I look through this, and I think about this, this format of y equals mx plus b, so m is the slope, 
So if I notice what's attached to the x, in this case, my slope would be negative two. And then there's two things that I wanna do here. So first I just wanna pick out what stands for the b in this equation. So the b in this equation would be three. But what does that mean as a point? So as a point, that would mean zero comma three. So that's the way that I wanna think about this. Okay, so let's take a look at another example here. So I've got y equals one fourth x minus seven. So what's in the slope position, i.e. what's attached to the x? So that would just be this one fourth here. So my, my slope in this case is, maybe I'll write m equals one over four, just so that we don't forget the, the letter to represent slope is m. Okay, now what's in the b position? Well, in this case, it would be not just seven, but all of negative seven. So if this is positive, then you leave it positive. If it's, ne if it's negative, you, you keep it negative. So negative seven would be my y-intercept. And so then as a point, this would be zero, negative seven. So then we're good to go on that one. All right, so I have another one here. So I'd highly recommend that you actually pause the video and just think about these for a second and then hit play when you're ready. So here, the slope would be three. And then what's in the y-intercept position is nine, which means that the y-intercept would be the point zero nine. Okay, so I've got just one more of these. This is a little bit of a trickier one. So pause the video again and just determine slope and y-intercept. Okay, so in this case, you have to know that when we say x, there's kind of this invisible one in front of this. So that's what the slope is gonna be. It's just gonna be one. Now, the other thing to notice is that there is no b here. So that means that b must be zero. And if it's zero, then we just don't write it. So my b in this case would be zero, which would make my y-intercept just the origin. So that's totally fine and, and that can happen. So that would be the point zero, zero. Okay, so why do we care about this? Well, thinking about how the beginning of this video, like it's much easier to graph if you know just the point and the slope. It makes just graphing so simple. So I have a couple of examples here then where we have equations of lines in slope-intercept form and I just wanna show you like how nice these are to graph. Okay. So looking at this first example, so y equals 2x plus 3. So the thing to notice here is the slope, so maybe we'll just note this. So my slope is 2 and my b in this case is 3. So remember, the b is the y-intercept. So what that's literally telling you is here on the y-axis, this is telling you what to mark on the y-axis, which would be positive 3. So I'm going to come up here to 1, 2, 3. So here's my point. Oops, and I using the wrong pen color. Here's my point. So then I have now my slope and I can literally count out the next points. So this slope represents two over one. So I'm gonna go up one, two, and I'm gonna go over one. So go up one, two, over one, and I can do that one more time, up one, two, and over one. And connect, boom, done. Okay, so what about, um, what about B here? Okay, so B is the same idea. So notice, so my slope in this case, we've got this negative, so that stands for negative one. And then my B would be equal to four. So in this case, now I'm gonna to come to the Y axis and I'm gonna mark where B equals four, one, two, three, four. Change the pen color again. And then for my slope, so it's negative one. So that's gonna really be negative one over one, which means I go down one and to the right one down one and to the right one. Remember, you always make a right turn. And so I can connect the points like this and I'm good to go. So if you wanna try that yourself, you can pause the video here and try these two and then hit play when you're ready. So for C here, so negative four would be my y-intercept. So I'll start by going down to negative one, two, three, four. And then my slope is one third, so that means I go up one and over one, two, three. So there's my first point, and then I go up one, over one, two, three. There's my next point. So I can connect those to get that line. Okay, and then for D, so remember, since there's no like plus number, that means that our y-intercept is just zero, zero. So I start here at zero, zero. And then my slope is three, so I'm really gonna go up one, two, three, and then over one. And then I'll do it again, up one, two, three, and over one. And so then there you go, connect them together, and you're good to go. And so that really covers how you can use a slope with graphing lines, so hopefully that was helpful. Any questions, you can always leave me a comment. I'll catch you guys next time.